So the, the title of my presentation is in the Pacific, an opportunity for Vietnam and its historical perspective. Um, I will just focus on some points because uh, the, the time is very short. Uh, uh, and I would begin with uh, 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 some uh, four recent facts, four questions and four response and perspective. Uh, the first uh, point is, uh, uh, I will uh, just uh, mention some uh, recent facts showing that this last years, the place of Vietnam into the discourse about the Indo-Pacific strategy increased significantly um, and Vietnam appears as a key actor. And so on the one hand, it is viewed um, as such by the great powers in the region and by some other ASEAN countries. And on the other, on the other hand, Vietnam openly state uh, this place uh, as a major actor of the Indo-Pacific uh, uh, strategy. I would, would like just to mention um, the um, participation of the um, uh, of um, Vietnam uh, into the, the uh, annual Indo-Pacific Business Forum organized by the US with Vietnam uh, every year. Um, and uh, there was uh, one uh, very uh, recently, uh, uh, this week, in fact, it was the fourth edition of this uh, uh, event. Um, and uh, this, um, this event uh, uh, say that uh, the idea is, is to advance a vision for the Indo-Pacific as a free and open region composed of nations that are independent, strong, and prosperous. And um, in this uh, event, they say that they will discuss about energy infrastructure, digital economy, market connectivity, health, and economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic with the aim to develop the great, a great their prosperity in the Indo-Pacific. So uh, we can see that uh, uh, since um, nine, uh, 2017 in particular, uh, with uh, the uh, free uh, and open Indo-Pacific uh, strategy by the US and by uh, 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 Donald Trump, um, in the context of a US-China commercial war, um, uh, Vietnam uh, appears uh, as a uh, an important actor from for uh, from the American point of view, and in fact, the recent uh, Biden administration is likely to keep uh, this uh, um, free and open Indo-Pacific strategy. For um, uh, they will keep this strategy, and um, and so um, uh, they, they, it, it's in the continuity of um, Trump, who declared uh, at the APEC summit in November. 2017 that Vietnam uh, is in the very heart of the Indo-Pacific. Uh, and uh, at, the, at the same time, Hanoi welcomes Washington's presence in the region to contribute to regional peace and security. So it's the first uh, example of uh, um, um, the, on the um, evocation of uh, Indo-Pacific uh, in between the relation between the US and Vietnam. Uh, the second example is uh, the um, held uh, the, um, the virtual summit with the Prime Minister um, um, Modi and uh, the Prime Minister of Vietnam, Nguyen Phuc, Phu, uh, in last December 2020. And also in this discussion, so they, they discuss about the future development of India-Vietnam Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. But, um, uh, and we can see that this last uh, couple of years, the relation between the two countries, Vietnam and India, have been reinforced uh, with a significant increase of bilateral visits on the economic and security level. And we can read in many newspapers uh, in India uh, that uh, when they cover this event, that uh, um, uh, Vietnam and India share uh, um, the question of territorial grabbing foreign policy of China in the Indo-Pacific region as a parasol island and the trans-Himalayan region uh, of Aksai Chin uh, considered as uh, uh, Chinese uh, territories. And so this, uh, these two countries consider uh, that they share the same uh, 
um, uh, strategic uh, issue uh, concerning this uh, point. Um, and um, we can see in, the, um, I, we discussed with the professor uh, uh, Acharya about the ancient connection between Vietnam and India uh, since Bandung. And, um, but uh, so Vietnam, since this last year, uh, um, developed a very uh, strong partnership and strategic partnership with India. And India, uh, um, for, for uh, Prime Minister Modi, Vietnam is for India a, cl a close partner right next to China, which is very important in his strategic uh, act East. We'd like to uh, also to mention um, also in uh, last October 2020, the new Japanese um, Prime Minister Suga uh, Yoshihide, uh, who chose uh, Vietnam for his first foreign trip, uh, telling that Vietnam is an important partner of Japan and plays a key role in realizing the free and open Indo-Pacific strategy. It's another example of the role of, of, of Vietnam seen by the other uh, Asian uh, power in the region. Uh, and uh, to uh, conclude uh, this, um, so this uh, fact, um, in August uh, 2019, um, the uh, first Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, went to uh, Vietnam uh, for the first time it was a first bilateral visit in 25 years. And um, so th they decided to uh, raise the bilateral relationship to a strategic partnership. Uh, so in, two, uh, in 2018, uh, and um, uh, enhanced economic engagement strategy will be finalized in 2021. So we can see through this different uh, um, example uh, since uh, uh, last year that the place of Vietnam um, uh, in the discourse about Indo-Pacific um, uh, 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 took um, an increasing place. And so I would like to, to um, ask some questions and to try to, to uh, respond or to give some, some, uh, some response to this question. Um, the first question is, uh, is uh, in the Pacific just uh, the logic consequence of the opening policy uh, of Doi Moi? Um, indeed, uh, um, we can, uh, you, you know that uh, um, in uh, 1986, uh, the Vietnam uh, Communist Party decided to follow the policy uh, also uh, chosen by, uh, the Ch by China to uh, reform completely his uh, economic policy. And so after uh, more than uh, 35 years, Vietnam uh, had, um, um, during these 25 years, Vietnam was isolated uh, from uh, the rest of the, the Southeast Asia, um, uh, in particular after the invasion of Cambodia in 1978. And uh, then after uh, the bloody clash with China, at its northern border in 1979. And so um, uh, just after his reunification in 1975, uh, Vietnam was quite isolated, except with USSR and Central Europe. And after the fall of uh, USSR and uh, communist Central Europe, uh, the situation of uh, Vietnam was really very uh, difficult and they were, uh, they were very uh, isolated. And so they uh, changed completely their policy and um, they, um, uh, um, after this uh, decision to, uh, of the Doi Moi, the new, uh, uh, so the, the, the reform to, to open the, the economy uh, to the market, uh, Vietnam uh, have known an exceptional period uh, of 35 years. This year, it's exactly the 35 uh, uh, anniversary of the Doi Moi. And, um, it's changed completely uh, the, 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 the situation in Vietnam. Uh, and two priority was uh, developed during this uh, 35 years. First of all, the economic integration. And second, the reintegration in the international community. Um, and um, moreover, uh, the Doi Moi has permitted to the Communist Party to rebuild the country 
which was after 35 years of war, uh, um, was uh, completely destroyed, and also to keep the monopoly of power. So uh, this reform is uh, very important for Vietnam, and uh, this economic integration means also the opening to uh, the progressive opening to the region, first of all to ASEAN, uh, and then to the rest of Asia. And so uh, this multi multilateralism is uh, one of the most important um, uh, characteristic of the foreign policy of uh, Vietnam. Um, and uh, in fact, this uh, economic integration on one hand and the multilateralism on the second hand uh, are the two priority for the Vietnamese strategy to reach uh, its goal to become a middle power and then to keep his legitimacy face to his people. So we can say now after this period of 35 years that uh, Vietnam is one of the most uh, open economies in Asia uh, behind Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, uh, he adopt a strategy of diverse, uh, diversity of uh, its economic partners and attract uh, investors. So we, um, no, uh, any country in Southeast Asia have um, uh, 17 free trade agreements. It's a, uh, uh, really the, the highest number. And uh, in fact, this uh, policy uh, uh, had a great success and, um, and the, the, the growth of Vietnam during all these periods period was uh, uh, very high. So we could say that uh, now uh, the Indo-Pacific, which enlarged the, the region, is a new step of the Doi Moi, um, uh, so that now Vietnam uh, are interested in completing uh, um, its uh, 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 its uh, num numerous um, free trade, like uh, in Asia, the RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, with, which gathered the ASEAN, China, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea, and Australia, but also the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, um, which includes uh, um, many countries uh, uh, till the, the um, uh, Latin America. So it's a, um, a very uh, large uh, number of uh, cooperation, uh, uh, which has been enlarged. And we can see that uh, in these last years, uh, the cooperation with India, but also with Africa, because Africa is a, a, a part of this large Indo-Pacific, uh, uh, Vietnam has uh, developed a, a policy regarding Africa. And uh, my colleague, Chang Ti Ang Dao, uh, will speak about that uh, in his presentation in the next panel. So the first question, we can say that uh, uh, the, the, the Indo-Pacific uh, strategy could be a continuity of uh, the strategy of Vietnam of integration and multilateralism since this uh, last four decades. Um, so it's the first point. Uh, the second question uh, is the Indo-Pacific, uh, the necessary strategy faced to the Chinese constant incursions in his territorial waters in the East Sea, as uh, the Vietnamese say, or the South China Sea for the Chinese? Um, it's a real question. And indeed, uh, the Indo-Pacific is also a strategic response for, uh, from Vietnam uh, to uh, this uh, problem of uh, violation of, uh, of China in East Territorial seas. Uh, this fact is not uh, recent. We know that uh, this uh, uh, island was, uh, 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 China uh, uh, took uh, power on this island in uh, 19. 74, so a uh, long time ago. Um, so um, we can say that uh, since, uh, um, so in the context of confrontation between uh, the US and China, uh, um, Vietnam, like uh, all the other country in ASEAN, doesn't want to choose. Um, we have a lot of example of, of a common point between the two countries. Uh, both countries have similar political systems uh, and similar economic system, uh, and Vietnam uh, follow the model of China. 
And uh, in, we have really to say that after the fall of uh, Rush, uh, uh, USSR and uh, the Comic Con allies, Vietnam really, uh, um, it was a, a really thanks to the Chinese model that Vietnam uh, um, succeed in uh, um, not falling down like his uh, allies. So um, we can see that uh, during all this period, Vietnam benefits from bilateral trade and investment ties with China. And we can say that China is currently Vietnam's larger trading partner and the seventh larger foreign investor in Vietnam. Um, so uh, we have to say also that Vietnam has no choice to maintain bilateral economic ties, um, but at the same time, we have to stand up uh, uh, to China in the South China Sea when uh, it must. So uh, this uh, strategic issue is really uh, very important for Vietnam. Uh, and um, uh, uh, we can see in the Vietnam Defense White Paper uh, in 2019, that one of the most uh, uh, important problem for uh, Vietnam is uh, the South China Sea. Uh, and um, uh, we can uh, also see in these uh, documents that uh, the characteristic of the policy of Vietnam, four knows and one depends, um, is um, um, concerned exactly the, the, the question of the South China Sea. Uh, that means that, uh, so the four, uh, I just remember you that the four knows are uh, no military alliance, no siding with one country against another, no foreign military bases, and no using force or threatening to use force in international relations. But uh, in this last white paper, uh, um, Vietnam had uh, uh, one depend, uh, uh, that is to say, depending on circumstances uh, and specific conditions, Vietnam will consider developing necessary appropriate defense and military relations with other countries. Uh, that is to say, it's an implicit message for major powers that Vietnam might, to a certain extent, go further in military relations with other countries um, if China actions in South China Sea cross its red lines. So we can see that uh, uh, the second point is that Indo-Pacific is also a question of strategy for Vietnam uh, after 10 years of uh, a lot of uh, violation of his uh, um, um, uh, territorial waters. Um, I didn't uh, see how much uh, time I have. Uh, can you remember me, uh, um, Stefan? Okay, I continue. Uh, no, it's, it's really time to conclude, Claire. We are out of time for at least five minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's really time to conclude. I have sent you any, a message. We can't hear you, uh, Professor Claire. Conclude can you unmute? with a sound, yes. <laughs> Claire, your mic. You need to unmute. Claire. Yes, sorry. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. I will just conclude in saying that uh, um, uh, um, Vietnam um, um, have a long experience of dealing with China dur uh, during its long history. Uh, and uh, so, um, um, for the, uh, but at the moment, Vietnam has no interest in uh, confronting with China. Uh, she had uh, some experience of this confrontation, and because uh, uh, of the Doi Moi and the 35 years of economic growth, uh, 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 confrontation with China was destroyed all this policy. So uh, we uh, can um, uh, conclude that Vietnam has absolutely uh, no interest and will do all what she can to, uh, uh, to uh, continue his cooperation with China. And uh, ASEAN is very important for uh, Vietnam to uh, um, succeed in uh, um, keeping the balance between China and the US. Sorry for, the, for uh, this uh, too long paper. Thank you. <laughs>